सहनावतु सहनो भुनक्तु सह वीर्यंकरवावह तेजस्वी नवधी तमस्तु मा विद्विषावह ओं शाति 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 समस्त जन कल्याणे निरत करुणामय नमा चिन्मय देव सदु ब्रह्म विद्वर के विल नौ चैम द मंगला चरण सो आई एम गन शेर मै स्क्रीन सो दट यू कैन ऑल सी द इंग्लिश ट्रांसलिटरेशन ऑफ इट ओके दिस इज द फर्स्ट वर्स ऑफ पंचदशी दिस इज द इनवोकेशन श्लोक All right. Do you see the screen? Namah Shri Shankarananda. Give me one second, okay? Let me just make it bigger for you. Go. Can you repeat after me. Namah Shri Shankarananda. Namah Shri Shankarananda. Guru Padam Bujan Mani. Guru Padam Bujan Mani. Savila Samaha Moha. सविला समोह ग्राह ग्रासकर्मणि ग्राह ग्रासकर्मणि सो दिस इज द फर्स्ट वर्स ऑफ पंचदशी इन द फर्स्ट चैप्टर दिस इज द इनवोकेशन श्लोक एंड वेल चैम्प दिस विथ एवरी बिगिनिंग ऑफ क्लास सो वी इनवोक भगवान ग्रेस and puja gurudev's blessings and the grace of swami vidya ranya ji as we embark on panchadashi chapter 3 hmm? so before we start this chapter officially we'll just review a little bit of uh, what we have done so far now panchadashi is a text by this swami vidya ranya Swami Vidya Ranya Ji literally means the forest of knowledge, and Swami Vidya Ranya Ji was a very very knowledgeable person. It is said that in in his uh, married life, he did this Gayatri mantra, Gayatri mantra, a Purush Charana. So he chanted it hundreds and thousands of times, and the result of this. when one chants it you know for hundreds and thousands of times a certain number a certain method a way when they do it like this it's called purash charan ha huh? so every syllable let us say om so om 100 times bhur 100 times you know bhuva 100 times so every 100000 times rather 100000 times every syllable has to be chanted so it it comes up to over maybe a million times that the gayatri mantra has to be chanted and when he did this a uh, gayatri devi did not come to him did not bless him right so one is supposed to chant the whole thing you know all together for many many times and at the end of that you're supposed to get the blessings of the deity 
But Swami Vidyaranyaji did not get the blessings of Gayatri Devi. And so he renounced the world. He took sannyasa. He renounced the world. And after he renounced the world, then Gayatri Devi came to bless him. And she said, what do you want? And he said, well, now I can't ask for anything because I renounced the world. And she said that I will make sure that you are full of knowledge and that you write something that will benefit the world at large. It will give the world so much clarity because Gayatri Devi is the deity of clarity. It will give the world so much clarity that they will understand the self. And so this work that Swami Vidyaranyaji has written is called Panchadashi. And this Panchadashi is 15 different texts, actually. Uh, it's different texts. So each one is unique in its own. And we have studied the first Prakarana, the first section. We've studied the second section, and now we're in the third section. The second section we did was Pancha Mahabhuta Viveka, the differentiation of the five elements. And when we took that, we understood what the self is apart from the five elements, apart from space, air, fire, water, earth. And it, after that, we had gone to Chandogya Upanishad to understand how that particular section or chapter, the chapter two of Panchadashi, how that correlated to the Upanishad, Chandogya Upanishad, chapter six. And then after that, we saw Bakya Vritti, this text which explains that Tvam Asi, right? That thou art. So we had gone through this. Now we're in the third chapter or the third topic. And the third topic is called Panchakosha Vivekaha. Hmm? Panchakosha Vivekaha. So this means, Vivekaha here means the inquiry or differentiation of Panchakosha of the five sheets. So this whole chapter, the third chapter, is going to analyze each of the five sheets and how the self is different from the five sheets. So we will go ahead now and start with the first verse. Okay. So I'll chant it and then you can repeat after me. Guha hitam brahma yatata. Guha hitam brahma yatata. Pancha kosha vivekataha. Pancha kosha vivekataha. Bodhum shakyam tatah kosha. Bodhum shakyam tatah kosha. Panchakam pravivichyate. Panchakam pravivichyate. Guha hitam brahma yatata. Panchakosha vivekataha. Bodhum shakyam tatah kosha. Panchakam pravivichyate. So we'll look at the meaning of the words first. Guhahitam Brahma. This Brahman, which is Guhahitam. Guha means cave. Ahitam means that which is lodged in the cave. So this Brahman, which is in the cave of the heart. This Brahman which is in the cave of the heart, yat tata, pancha kosha vivekataha. It is known through differentiating it from the five sheets, pancha kosha vivekataha. And bodhum shakyam, it is definitely possible to know it. It is definitely possible to know it through differentiating it from the five sheets, tataha, therefore, Kosha panchakam pravivichyate. Therefore, let us differentiate it. Pravivichyate, let us differentiate it from the five sheets. So this whole chapter, chapter three, is based on a section of Taitriya Upanishad called Brahmananda Vali, the second part of Taitriya Upanishad. And there it says that Brahma vid apnoti param. The knower of Brahman attains the Supreme. 
So the knower of Brahman attains the Supreme, which is Brahman. And what is that Brahman? Satyam Jnanam Anantam is Sat Chit Ananda, existence, consciousness, bliss. And that Brahman, where is that? It said, Yo Veda Nihitam Guhayam. That Brahman is in the cave of the heart. So that substratum of the world, Brahman, which is existence, consciousness, bliss, where is that? Where can I find that? How can I recognize that? In Taitri Upanishad, it says that Brahman is in the cave of the heart. And so this is going to analyze what is that which is in the cave of the heart. So that Brahman, which is Guhahitam, in the cave of the heart, that we can get through Panchakosha Viveka. Now this uh, word cave is very beautiful because cave tells us, you know, when we, we look at a cave and we think of a cave, it tells us that there's something inside. You know, when there's a, when you go for vacation or you go somewhere and they say there's a cave, there's something inside. So we have to enter that cave. Hmm? And cave also tells us that there's something that's hidden that cave is not something that is out in the open and for everybody to see. It's like hidden in some kind of structure. So there's something inside, there's something hidden, and caves are usually pretty dark. Usually dark inside, you can't see anything, you know, it's cold, it's dreary. And when we shed light in the cave, then we can see. Hmm? So what this is trying to say is there's a cave in all of us. There's a cave in all of us. And that cave that's in all of us is the panchakosha, is the five sheets. And the five sheets will be explained in the next verse. So the cave is the five sheets. And hidden within this five sheets, if we just look within this five sheets, we will find Brahman. And how can we find Brahman? Through knowledge. Uh, through knowledge. Bodhum Shakya. So therefore, this whole chapter is about really clearly differentiating each sheath from the other sheath from the other sheath and then understanding what is beyond the sheets, which is Brahman. So that Brahman, where do we find it? How do we find it? It's in the cave of the heart. The cave of the heart as Atman. And how do we recognize it? Through knowledge. And how, how does this knowledge work? Knowledge works through differentiating Brahman from the five sheets. Because Brahman is as though hidden, as though hidden because we're so identified with this body, mind, intellect. So this whole chapter is just peeling away these layers of identification. Hmm? So now we will go to the second verse and we will see what these five sheets are. Dehadabhyantaraf <laughs> pranaha Dehadabhyantaraf pranaha Pranadabhyantaram manaha Pranadabhyantaram manaha Tatah karta tato bhokta Tatah karta tato bhokta Kuhaseyam param para Kuhaseyam param para Dehadabhyantaraf pranaha Pranadabhyantaram manaha Tatah karta tato bhokta Kuhaseyam param para So here now it is saying five sheets. And usually when we think about sheet, you know, it's the sheet of a sword, something that covers. So these are called sheets because they as though cover Brahman. They cannot cover Brahman, 
but the identification with them as though covers Brahman. So what is the first? Deha. Deha means physical body. Abhyantaraha. And inner to the physical body is the second sheath, which is prana. Prana, the vital airs. Pranad abhyantara manaha. And inner to the pranas is called manaha or the mind. Tatahkarta. And inner to that is what we call the doer. The doer. Karta means doer. And inner to that is the bhokta. Bhokta, enjoyer. And these five sheets, they serve as the guha. Guha means cave. These five sheets are the cave. And this is the parampara. Parampara here means the lineage. These five things are like the lineage. And they are related to each other. So first we will see each sheet one by one. And then we will see how they are related to each other. And then he's going to go and uh, define the sheath and why we're not the sheath. So it's very, very systematic the way he does it. So the first body, the body is called Annamaya Kosha or the food sheath. Huh? Again, it's called sheath because it as though covers Brahman. When we identify with the body, we forget that we are Brahman. So the first sheath is really the deha, the body. Annamaya kosha, it's called food sheath. The next sheath is prana, pranamaya kosha. Prana here, uh, it's translated as vital airs, vital sheath. But really the meaning is, it's the energy that governs these physiological functions. So prana is this energy that empowers, that governs these five things, which are prana, respiration, apana, excretion, vyana, circulation, udana is reverse processes like coughing or sneezing, and samana, digestion. So that energy which governs all of these functions, that's called prana. And that's in the pranamaya kosha, hmm? our, our field of energy. And then what we have is manaha, manomaya kosha, the mind, right? So the mind now is our seat of emotions, our seat of emotions, our seat of doubts, all these thoughts of an emotional nature, they are in the mind. All the thoughts of a doubting nature, uncertain nature, they are in the mind. And then after that, we have the Vijnanamaya Kosha. The Vijnanamaya Kosha is the sheet where we have the doer. Doer. Huh? So this I am doing, I am Shubhani, I am this person, I am a woman, I am a man. This kind of I stamp, I am this, I am that, I am that person, I am in this place. This I am stamp is called the doer. This comes in the Vijnanamaya Kosha, doership. And then subtler than that is what we call the Anandamaya Kosha or the bliss sheath. Now here, enjoyer sheath doesn't mean the actual enjoyer, just take this word bhokta as bliss sheet. What is this bliss sheet? This bliss sheet is this sheet of now subtle thoughts. Hmm? So we know in the mental sheet, in the mind sheet, it's thoughts of an emotional nature. In the intellectual sheet, it's thoughts of a decisive nature and it's where the doer is, it's where the doer shines. Now, this bliss sheet has these three kinds of thoughts. And they're called Priya, Moda, and Pramoda. And I'll explain what they are. Certain times uh, in our lives, we have these subtle thoughts where we just go silent and close our eyes. Huh? 
they happen in three types of instances. For example, Priya means that when we see something and we, let's say we see something like a sunrise or sunset, or something so beautiful or even the ocean. And we kind of go within ourselves. We close our eyes and we just enjoy that so much. It's a very silent, subtle thought. It's not like, oh, this ocean's so beautiful. Oh, the sunrise is so beautiful. It's not that kind of thought. It's that when we see that beauty, we kind of close our eyes and we go inside. That going inside is, is touching the Anandamaya Kosha. That, that subtle thought which takes us inside in, into inner silence is called Anandamaya Kosha. And similarly, so that is one aspect when we see something, Priya. Moda is when we hold something, when we touch something, uh, when we gain something and we go inside. So maybe the first time that uh, a mother is holding the child uh, or a father is holding the child, that's a very subtle, subtle kind of joy. It's, it's not something that can be expressed. It's something that one just goes within into this pure silence of bliss. It, it is called touching the Anandamaya Kosha. Hmm? And the last one is called Pramoda. Pramoda means, so one is seeing, one is holding or touching. One is when we become one with something, how we feel intense bliss. Hmm? So it could be that uh, it's our favorite food that's coming on the dinner table or on the lunch table. And it's, it's so nice. We haven't had it in a long time and we're so excited that the food is there. And when we eat that piece of food, whether it's a cake or a sweet or a delicacy, we eat it, we close our eyes and it's just like a whole different world that we've reached. Hmm? So this is called Anandamaya Kosha. In waking state, it expresses as these three subtle thoughts, three subtle vrittis. And in deep sleep state, of course, it, it uh, expresses as a, this subtle thought of just bliss. It's just a subtle thought of bliss. Nothing else is happening there. So these are these five sheets where we get absolutely carried away in our lives. Hmm? Some of us get carried away in the body sheet. We can't even go beyond the body. We become so obsessed with our body, our looks, our weight, our height, what we're going to wear, you know. We're so obsessed that we just even stay in this sheet. We don't move past it. Hmm? And some of us get so obsessed with our pranamaya kosha, with our energy. Oh, my, my feel really good right now. I am high on energy. You know, I, I feel great. I feel fit. We're so obsessed with our breath, with how we're doing, with, you know, our whole digestion, our hunger, our thirst. We're obsessed with that. And some people are obsessed in the mental level the mind level, that they always you know, want their mind to be peaceful and beautiful and around good people, around good company, and in a state of peace, in a state of joy, in a state of calm. So they'll do whatever it takes to get their mind to that state. So some people just get obsessed with just being in that state. And some people are obsessed in Vijnana Maya Kosha, in their individuality, in their personalities, that I have to shine out. I have to achieve this in life. I have to go this far. I have to, you know, make sure that I am number one. All about that ego, just all extending that ego, wanting to make sure that that ego is there up in front. Hence, some are just obsessed with Anandamaya Kosha, just wanting to get to this silent bliss, silent bliss where it is just just a state of pure, utter silence, utter calmness. 
So some people will take drugs because they just want to numb their minds and get into that state of like numbness or take alcohol or do certain things just to get to that level. So we become obsessed with these sheets. And because we become obsessed with these sheets, we're not able to understand what lies underneath them. And one of our Swamiji's always jokes and says that if these saints and sages are writing these texts at this point in time, they would not say we have five sheets, they would say we have 10 sheets, the sixth sheath being our family, the seventh sheath being our phone, our devices, the eighth sheath being, you know, our, you know, our homes or our cars or whatever it is, our ninth sheath, our career, right? So forget, even this is quite inner. <laughs> Sometimes we're, st we're still obsessed with other things who, that we think are ourselves. We think our devices are ourselves, our families ourselves, and we get so obsessed with that. So the idea of this the section, this text is, let's analyze each one and see how we can let go of it. Let go of it and dig deeper. Now, how these five sheets are related to each other is that they get subtler and subtler and the latter one governs the former one. So, for example, the food sheet. Huh? Subtler than that is what we call the vital air sheet or the pranamaya kosha. It's subtler. Huh? And the pranamaya kosha governs the food sheet. Because when I'm hungry, when the pranamaya kosha, the, the digestion happens, and all of a sudden hunger strikes, then I, I need to eat, right? Digestion happens and thirst strikes, I need to drink water. So the, the energies that we have, the circulation, the digestion, all of that, they govern our food. They govern how much we eat, when we eat, what we eat. So the pranamaya kosha, vital air sheet, is subtler, subtler than the food sheet. Now we come to the mind. The mind is subtler than the pranamaya kosha or the vital air sheet. Why? Because the mind can actually control the breath. And we will find in our lives that our breath matches the mind. Uh -huh. So when we're angry, we're breathing really heavily. When we're, you know, when we're calm, we're breathing so nicely and just lightly. So the way the mental temperament is, that's the way the breath is. And the mind is subtler, much subtler than the pranas. Much subtler, much more pervasive, and it governs our breath. But the beauty about the mind and the breath is, the mind has a hand on the breath. It can control the breath. But we can actually also use the breath to slow down the mind. They have a special connection, both of them. But the mind has the upper hand. Hmm? Then, subtler than the mind is the intellect. The intellect or the doer guides the mind. That, you know, you might be feeling, I might be feeling sad and the intellect will say, get up, get up, rise up, bounce back, get back to work and it'll be okay. You know, so there's a, a, a subtler part of us that's governing this mind. The subtler part of the mind is feeling happy. And then the intellect will say, okay, fine, you're happy. Don't get too over, too overjoyed right now. Wait wait because there could be more to the story <laughs> so there's that subtle intellect that doer that keeps guiding the mind hmm? and it's, it's more inner inner subtler it governs it then this anandamaya kosha is subtler than the intellectual sheet the bliss sheet is subtler than the intellectual sheet why because think about why the the, the doer, the intellectual sheet, why is it planning for all of these things? Why is it setting all of these goals? 
that in 2025, I have to achieve this, or I want to have a great relationship, or I want to move to this place, or I want to see this site. Why is it planning, working for all of these things? Because it wants to attain that bliss. It wants to attain that bliss. Actually, every day, all of us are only trying to touch Anandamaya Kosha. That's it. <laughs> That's all we're trying to do. We're trying to do things to make us blissfully happy. That's all we're trying to do. And that's why we all love to sleep, because when we sleep, we're blissfully happy. We have no issues. We all love that. But even in the waking state, we're trying to do things just to be blissfully happy. Every day, every day. That's all. That's the one goal we have. <laughs> that's the underlying goal, right? So these are the five sheets. And this is how each one is inner subtler than the other each one is governing the other it's a lineage of them and these sheets are the cave that's as though covering brahman and and sometimes we are so obsessed in a specific sheet that we don't move forward so now that he has described what we are looking for what we're trying to recognize, which is Brahman. And he has described also the five sheets that are covering Brahman, as though covering Brahman. Now his thought flow is, he's gonna take each sheet and explain what it is and why we are not that. So let us see now verse number three. Petra Bhuk Tana jad viriat Petra bhuktana jad viriat Jato ne naiva vardhate Jato ne naiva vardhate Deha so namayo natma Deha so namayo natma Prakchordvam tada bhavataha Prakchordvam tada bhavataha Petra bhuktana jad viriyad Jato ne naiva vardhate Deha so namayo natma Prakchordvam tada bhavataha So what he says here is Pitra bhukta najad viryat jataha. Jataha. So this body is produced. So we have to go backwards and there's a big compound. This body is produced from the virya. Virya means that sperm and ova of the mother and father. Anajad. It, it is born from the food bhukta eaten by the mother and father so whatever the parents have eaten that food the essence of that food that goes on to form the body so the body is born from food it's born from whatever our parents have eaten and that's why uh, when people are pregnant uh, they say that make sure to eat healthy because that is forming the fetus of the baby that is forming the body of the baby. Anne naiva vardhate. And this body grows through food. So it's born from food, the essence of the parents. And it grows with food also. How we grow, how we shrink, it's because we eat. And the more we eat, the more we expand. The less we eat, we shrink. So it is grow, it grows by food. Dehaha saha annamayaha. And so therefore this body is called annamaya kosha. Annamaya literally means it's a modification of food. It's called modification of food or food sheath because it's born from food. It grows in food. And let's not forget it dissolves into food also. It dissolves into food. So it is just actually food. 
this whole body which we see, um, which we saw also in Panchadashi chapter 2, it is just food. And therefore, na atma is not the self. Prak cha urdvam, before and after tad abhavataha means before birth it is not there and after death it is not there hmm? so this body cannot be us it cannot be us because it is just of the nature of food yeah? and so many other reasons we have seen also before that the body is not us it is changing constantly changing the body is something that we experience we experience this body we experience how it's changing we experience its size its shape its form we can control the body we can move the body it means there's something deeper than the body we can direct the body so this body is is not atma it is only made up of food it is growing in food, it dissolves in food, it's changing, we experience it, we can control it. And in Viveka Churamani, we also saw so many things that this body is also dirt, it's full of dirt, right? So therefore, this is not the self. There's one school called Charvak. There's that Charvak school, it believes that this body is the self. Everything that you see here is the self. And therefore, the way they live life is just live as if there's no tomorrow. Just seize the day. Just do whatever you will with your body because there's no before, there's no after. The body is the self and that's it. But when we come to the Vedas, if anybody reads the Vedas, the first thing that they'll say is, you are not the body, you're a jiva. A jiva means you're an individual being, right? Later on, the Vedas will come to say you are really Atman. But in the beginning, if we open the Vedas, there's no uh, room for anyone who thinks they're the body. Because the Vedas are full of rituals and practices for people who come to it understanding that they're an individual being. They're a jiva. So this shift even if our, our shift is meant to go to I am Brahman, right? Our shift has to go to I am Brahman. But even if we make this shift from I am the body to I am a jiva, our life will dramatically change. Dramatically change. We won't be so attached to this body. So this shift has to be made first. I am a body from I am a body to I am a jiva. I am an individual being. And from Jiva to Atman, Brahman. Now, in the next verse, he gives a, a more detailed reason. So first he explains what this food sheet is, or Annamaya Kosha. Now again, he explains a, a more logical reason why this cannot be us. So let us see the next verse. Purvajanmanya sannetat Purvajanmanya sannetat Janma sampadayet katham Janma sampadayet katham Bhavi janmanya satkarma Bhavi janmanya satkarma Nabunjat Nabunjite hasanchitam, Nabunjite hasanchitam, Purva janmanya sannetat, Janma sampadayet katham, Bhavi janmanya satkarma, Nabunjite hasanchitam. So what he says here is, now think about this body. Purva janmani asan. So Purva janmani asan. It was not existent before this birth. So before this birth, this body did not exist. Janma sampadayet katham. So how could it, it have produced this birth? 
before this birth the body didn't exist so how could have this body produced this birth and then bhavi janmani asat and it is not there in the future it is not there in the future it's not existing in the future karmana bhunjita iha sanchitam and therefore how can that body that body na bunjita it cannot enjoy karma that results of actions sanchitam that collected results of actions iha here so what does this mean right what does this mean this means this that this body has come into being right so this body has come into being but what caused this body there had to be something that caused this body because it cannot just come to being randomly huh? in uh, the vedas we believe in the law of karma so there's a reason why this body is this size this shape there's a reason why this body is born to a certain family to a certain lifestyle so there's a reason that caused this body so if there's a reason that caused this body then there had to be something before this body so this body cannot be atma because this body just came into being now it just came into being now from the uh, essence of the parents it just came into being but what caused it to come into being this way why is it in this place in this form in this house in this manner why so there has to be something before that so therefore this body cannot be the self it cannot be the self because it is well known that atma is eternal the self is eternal but this body just came and there was something before it so this body is not the self this this term this uh, is called akrita abhyagama dosha so if you see in your book it's also there akrita abhyagama dosha akrita abhyagama dosha means that if we think that this body just randomly came there would be a dosha a defect of this body coming into being without any cause so akrita without any cause abhyagama it comes into being so there would be that defect if we think this body just came randomly then what else does he say he says and after this body dies right they're still going to be all the results of actions that have to be enjoyed because it's not like we re reap all the results of our actions in this birth itself we're performing so many actions so many actions so many actions how is it possible to reap all the results of the actions in this birth itself it's not possible so when the body dies there's going to be lots of results of actions there's going to be lots of it so where will that go so this body it dies there's something after it there's something after it so it this body cannot be the self and this something after it this is called krita vipranasha huh? so if we think if we think that this body is it and there's nothing after it it is the dosha the defect called as krita vipranasha means whatever is done uh, has getting is getting destroyed it has no way it has no body it's no other thing to get into so this this cannot be it this body cannot be it because there is something before this that caused this body and after this body goes there's all these results of actions that have to be reaped they have to be reaped and therefore there's something after this body so he says because of this this body is not atma it's not the self there is something deeper than this body and therefore 
pass through Anamaya Kosha. Okay. Okay, so now I'll just summarize what we've done today so we can see the thought flow. Hmm? Here, what we have seen so far is in chapter 3, Panchakosha Viveka, Swami Vidyaranya is talking about how the self is different from the five sheets. And how he explains it is that the five sheets are like a cave. They're as though covering the self. And so we have to as though get into this cave sheet by sheet by sheet by sheet to understand what the self is. And the five sheets are the Annamaya Kosha, the food sheet, Pranamaya Kosha, vital air sheet, Manomaya Kosha, the mental sheet, Vijnanamaya Kosha, intellectual sheet, and Anandamaya Kosha, the bliss sheet. And these sheets are known as a Parampara. They are a lineage. Why are they lineage? Why are they related to each other? Because each one is inner, is subtler than the former one. And each one governs the former one. So they get subtler and subtler and subtler. And so what he does is not only differentiates the self from the five sheets, but differentiates each sheath from the other so that very clearly we can see why we are not that. And he first starts with the food sheath saying that this body is just made up of food. We get so obsessed about it that it is just a food sheath. It's born, sustained, and dissolved into food. And why cannot can the body not be the self? Body cannot be the self because clearly there is something before the body that caused the body to be the way it is. And clearly there is something after the body that has to reap the, all of the results which the body has performed in this very life because it cannot reap all the results in one lifetime. There are too many of them. So because it is not present before and after, it cannot be the self or the Atman. Next, next week we will take up then Pranamaya Kosha. Uh, so like this, he will go one by one into the thought flow, right? So we'll say the closing prayer, then we'll have any questions that you have, and then we will sit quietly for some time. Hmm? Om Purnamadav Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Shri Gurabhyo Namaha Hari Om